Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the survival game series. In today's video, we're going to be continuing on with our heads up display inside of the game. So if you haven't watched the last video, I advise that you go ahead and check it out using the thumbnail in the top left hand corner. Also, if you haven't seen the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series, I also advise you check that out uh, just so you can easily follow along. Anyway, so if you look in my viewport, you can see I've got my player running around and I've got my two bars for hunger and stamina. Now we got all of the stuff over from Photoshop in the last video, however for now they don't move, they're static and there is no functionality. So hopefully what we're going to be doing by the end of the tutorial is pretty much making the bars look a little bit better, adding in the font so it, uh, our heads up display looks better, and most importantly we're going to show you how to attach your hunger progress bar to the actual hunger value that we set up in our first video. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up my survival HUD widget. This widget is where we're storing all of our, you know, content that we want to be displayed on the screen. So the first thing that I'm going to do is quickly change the fill color to make it look a little bit nicer and, uh, you know, more coherent with our HUD that we actually created inside of our Photoshop document. So I've got my Photoshop document here. And once again, like I said previously, uh, you can actually download all of my assets for this project in the description below. So you can see I just clicked on that, I went to fill color and opacity, and I just changed this to a bit of an orange color to make it look how we wanted to. I haven't changed any of the settings since the last video, so it should work exactly the same for you. And for this bar, I'm just going to change it to a yellow as well and now it will look quite nice and we've got that orangey color at the start of the bar and our graphics look the same as our photoshop document one thing i also wanted to do was to actually change the text and the font on the hunger and the stamina stuff so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i'm actually going to get the color from the start of the bar just to make it look quite nice and what I was also requested to do was show you how to show you how to actually import the font um, that I use for the text. So if you want to do that, it's quite simple. You just find the font file on your computer, wherever that is. For me, I've actually got it on my desktop and it's actually called Feast of uh, Flesh or something like that. I'm actually going to include this or uh, this font inside of my little assets folder for the HUD. So feel free to download that. And if you want to use it inside the game, you just drag it into the content browser. Once you've done that, uh, it should actually be available for you to use inside of here. So now we haven't just got Roboto, we just change it to Feast of Flesh just like that and it works out quite nice for us. So it's looking, it's starting to look quite nice. So if I go ahead and compile, press play, we can take a look at how this uh, works. So, okay, it looks like something's going wrong. So I'm going to open up whatever I've got. So when, when you edit specific, okay, I'm not too sure what's going on there. So I'm going to press launch and see if that works for us. I'm not too sure what's going on there. I'm probably going to have to just close the engine and open it up again and it should work out perfectly fine. Uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to do exactly that. I'm just going to quickly close the engine. Um, if you do have any problems like this, just, just, just do as I do. Just close the engine and hope for the best. So I'm going to quickly pause the video here and once I got the engine up again um, and running, we will continue. So two seconds. Okay, so it seems like everything's all good now. I've got the engine back up and once we press play, you can actually see we've got our hunger bar and our stamina bar and they're still not moving. So what we need to do now is set up a binding for the progress. So to do that, let's go ahead and open it up. And before I actually do it, I'm just going to make sure it all looks all good um, using the uh, progress thing. So I can just see how it moves and I can tell it looks quite nice and hopefully the player should be able to work with that. I just want to double check so we can see that our progress, uh, that you know, if there is any issues um, with the code, we're going to know whether it's the code or just the way we set up our progress bar. But just moving progress from 0 to 1, you can see it looks all good. So to actually create the binding, to get it moving with your uh, hunger variable, you've got to go over to progress, binding, create a binding, and inside of here we've got to do a few things. So for the return value, we actually have to get some values from the player. So to do that, we've got to cast the third person character, and then we've got to access 
the hunger value. So get player hunger, just like that. And under object wildcard for third person uh, character, we need to just type in get player character. Um, because it's a parent of, you know, player character stuff. Um, but if we compile that, it should work great. And what we need to actually do is uh, float minus, uh, float divided by float. Because our hunger value goes from 100 to uh, 0, and the progress value for a progress bar actually goes from 0 to 1, we essentially just have to divide it by 100 uh, to get the value. So if we go ahead and hook this up, it should convert it just fine. I'm going to press compile and see how it goes. So if I press play, let's have a look at our uh, progress bar now. So hopefully on the first tick when it goes down, it's getting less. I can see there's some slight movement there. It's going to do it again, and it's going to keep on going down until we die. Um, so what I'm going to do is quickly change some of the values inside of our hunger system uh, for the variables so it speeds up and it doesn't do it in big chunks. Because big chunks doesn't look too great um, for the player, it doesn't look natural. So we're going to change this to something like 2, and we're going to set the duration to, no, we're going to change it to 5 there, and duration to 1. So now it's going to take away 5 every 1 second. Now, obviously, when you're, you know, trying to balance things, you're going to play around with these values more, but you can see it's going down quite nicely, and the bar is adjusting accordingly. Also, now that we actually have the progress bar in place, we can get rid of this print string stuff. So I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can do that now. So I'm going to open up my third person player stuff, and I'm just going to simply get rid of the print string here. We don't need it. We have a visual notifier of, you know, how our hunger system is working. So if I press play, let's give it a test now. I'm going to let it go down a little bit. And then I'm actually going to pick up one of the food crates that we created and see if it adjusts for us. So it seems to be working okay. And now I'm going to go pick up one of these. It's gone up a little bit. You can see the value is 70. The print string from that is actually from the pickup itself and not your hunger system variables. So I'm going to pick up a couple more. It keeps going up, up, uh, and up, and it seems to be working. So one last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of these pre uh, print strings to return the value of how much they picked up. We don't really need that anymore. We know it all works. So I'm just going to hook up destroy actor to set player hunger. And over here, we don't really need to do anything else by the looks of things. So, oh no, false will be destroy actor. There we go. So we're going to do one last test here, just to make sure everything works. Um, but it's starting to look like, you know, a decent proper game. We've still got loads to do in terms of creating gameplay mechanics and stuff, but other than that, it's working out quite nice. So, yeah. Um, obviously, you got to do it on both of your pickups, or if you only have one, you should be all good. Uh, but really, uh, you should be just fine. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much everything for today's episode. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'm really hoping that you're enjoying, uh, all of this survival stuff, creating the mechanics, creating the HUD. Uh, next up on my list of things to do is probably going to be the player camera and a few other mechanics. So thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.